and welcome back. The New Yorkers for Parks mission has been to ensure all New Yorkers in all neighborhoods have access to quality parks as well as open spaces. New York for Parks conducts research and develops tangible policy recommendations around findings related to park development, management, and sustainability. Here now to share a little bit more is the Executive Director of New Yorkers for Parks, Adam Ganser. And uh, Adam, we're glad to have you sharing with us. I'm very happy to be here. Good. Well, glad to have you. We know, particularly here in the Bronx and also in New York City, a lot of parkland to cover a lot to be a good steward over. Uh, but given the current climate, uh, we've got COVID-19, of course, uh, budget cuts that are looming, probably an estimation of like 14 percent. Um, how do you see things playing out for parks? Well, the fiscal year uh, 21 budget cut was exactly 14 percent. That's $85 million. And it's really devastating for the Parks Department, particularly now uh, as more people are in their parks than ever before, obviously because of COVID-19. Uh, that's going to play out even worse over the winter and into the spring as we're seeing another wave of COVID and people more, more and more relying on their parks through, through the shoulder seasons. Yeah. And when we talk about people relying on parks, a lot of people are outside. That means an increased need of services, I would assume. And we'll probably have more people possibly in parks than uh, normal. How do you see things make, uh, playing out in terms of bridging that gap? Because... Um, we're going to be going to parks. Yeah, the reality is we've seen uh, the impacts of these budget cuts already. There's just a, a tremendous amount of uh, trash in the parks that's harder for the Parks Department and the different not-for-profit organizations that manage parks to deal with. Uh, there's areas in the parks that have not been maintained at, to the level that we'd all love and, and rely on. Um, and that's just going to get worse uh, over the over the next several months. Uh, bridging the gap is going to be very difficult uh, unless we change the direction of the funding in the next fiscal year. Uh, the Parks Department has been asked to do more with less, but before time, we're going to see them uh, doing less with less, and that's going to have an impact on all New Yorkers. Yeah. Did you foresee this coming? I mean, we knew that there would be cuts, possibly, given the fact that we had COVID-19 all the states and city resources being moved around and juggled around. Did you anticipate this heavy a cut? Uh, no, we didn't. I, I think that uh, we have, we lead something called the Play Fair Coalition, which is uh, uh, over 300 organizations around the city that is really focused on the city's budget. And we were advocating all through the beginning of COVID up until the, the budget season that this was not the time to cut parks. And while we expected to have some cuts, as all agencies expected because of the, the economic crisis and the city budget crisis, the 14% represents a disproportionate amount compared to other agencies. This is more as a percentage than, than all but one other agency, which is a real problem. What does park equity look like for you? I mean, we hear about, you know, uh, advocating for parks, but for someone with boots on the ground, what does park equity really look like? Uh, it, it, there's many different ways to measure park equity. Um, I think the, the number one way that I measure it is through access. Uh, do people have access to a public open space uh, that's near their, their neighborhood? Uh, and this is you know, something that has, New York has been challenged by for a long time. Of the 1,700 parks in the city, most of them are small parks in neighborhoods. And what we've seen, uh, especially at the beginning of COVID, is when many of these small parks and playgrounds were shut down, over a million New Yorkers lost access to their neighborhood park. And unfortunately, those are in neighborhoods, uh, primarily with communities of color, and uh, to be honest, neighborhoods that were most impacted by COVID. So it's really a, a dire situation. Yeah. You're with New Yorkers for Parks. You're the executive director. For someone who doesn't know about New Yorkers for Parks, please uh, take the time to share a little bit about the organization. We are the city's only uh, independent not-for-profit advocating for parks and open space. You mentioned at the beginning that you know, we do a lot of research, we do a lot of advocacy around the budget, and we work with a lot of partners on future policy for New York City. Um, and we've been doing that for a long, long time. This is a particularly important moment for the organization as we are seeing the combination of budget cuts and people relying on parks more than ever before. And uh, we're convinced that there's a new way forward, and this will be an inflection point for the city with a focus on open space and parks for the future. Yeah, you got a lot of challenges, but I know volunteers also play an important part in getting that done as well, uh, and organization. Uh, how they navigated and what can we do going forward? 
you know, it's been challenging, but people are really looking to kind of get their hands dirty and get out and do something. We've been all cooped up for so long and everybody's sitting in their apartments. So getting out in parks and helping in parks has been uh, really extraordinary. Um, we, with a number of other uh, organizations around the city, helped uh, organize cleanups in over 60 parks around the city, all five boroughs. And that's something that had started long before we, uh, we started championing it, but uh, it will continue. And it's certainly a, a welcome site for all the park stewards in the city. I will say that that is not a replacement for the parks department staff that uh, has not been hired or will be laid off in the future. We really need the professionals out there doing the work, but volunteers have been, have been fantastic. Yeah. Well, we've just got finished the presidential election 2021. We will be having citywide mayoral elections. Uh, how much do you think the Parks Department, um, or I should say parks as a whole, uh, not the Parks Department, how much do you think parks is actually going to be a part of that city agenda? Are, are, are you convinced that uh, there will be enough and adequate talk about advocacy for parks? That's our job, is to make sure that it is part of the conversation. I don't think there's ever been another point in the recent history of New York, at least, where parks and open space haven't been uh, such a priority for all New Yorkers. I think one of the critical things to do is certainly, obviously, get the budget back to where it needs to be, but look bigger picture and longer term with uh, potential stimulus money, uh, infrastructure money, and transportation money, and looking at how park development can be coupled with a lot of those larger initiatives to make sure we're giving access to all New Yorkers. Yeah, you've got a lot of advocacy that goes on, and we talked about the elections that are coming forward. Obviously, your voice wants to be raised and amplified. How do the public, uh, particularly uh, those of us who are, you know, on the other side of the camera, say, listen, you know what, I, I hear this. Uh, I love my park. I got great open space where I want to see more open space. How do they participate in this public dialogue moving forward? Well, the, first, you could go to our website and look at uh, the variety of different ways you can get involved in our organization, and we'd love to have more people involved. Uh, second, I would uh, suggest that everybody contact their local council person and make their voices heard that parks and open space are a critical part of their lives. Uh, and then the last thing is uh, keep an eye on the candidates. If this is an important issue to you, the candidates for mayor should be raising this as part of their policy initiatives. Uh, that's what we're gonna be pushing for. So uh, all folks should pay attention to who's running and what they're saying. Yeah, as we approach 2021, what is your focus? I mean, obviously uh, we've got some things coming around the corner. We've got a new president that's uh, elected. Talk to us about how this all plays out for you and uh, what you aim to do towards 2021. Uh, going kind of in reverse order from those things that I'm hopeful for to those things that really need to be taken care of right away. Uh, as I mentioned, federal dollars coming into the city are uh, represent a huge opportunity for us to address these larger issues of park access and equity. Uh, so that's certainly a priority. Uh, the capital budget for the parks uh, system has been one that's been depleted over generations. And so we're looking to make sure that all the repairs that are required to our parks, the infrastructure repairs that are required to our parks are, are raised to a level that they're uh, being talked about by all elected officials. And then I think the, the general operations funding, the parks budget really needs to be addressed. This 15 or 14% cut, $85 million is really devastating. And the impacts of that are gonna be seen absolutely in the spring, they've already been seen. And so we're really gonna be putting our, our, our fingers on the button there pushing for a budget uh, change in the next fiscal year and pushing for uh, greater gains with the new administration. Uh, I don't want to thank you. That's about all the time we have for our segment, but we'll be continuing to follow this story uh, as we go into 2021. And we do know uh, that parks will definitely be a part of the conversation, if not on the part of politicians, definitely on the part of you advocating towards politicians. So thanks a lot, Adam. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. All righty. Well, we want to let you know if you want more information, don't go, don't forget to go to their website, uh, the website. And also you can follow them on Instagram and Twitter at NY4P, NY4P. Don't go anywhere. More show is coming up. We'll return right after this.